Welcome back to another episode of Girl Talk Mukbang Edition. I just got my room service. All right, so as much as I would love to give you guys a mukbang right now, I honestly just kind of want to eat and enjoy. <sighs> This is like honestly the true struggles of being a blogger. Like when to simply enjoy and take it in and like when to like bring you guys in on experiences. <sighs> you know what? No. I'm gonna bring you guys in on this. We're gonna eat together, okay? We might not talk about anything serious, but we're gonna eat together. We will break bread because we're a family. Ooh. Okay, this looks amazing. And I think what I'm actually just gonna do, instead of just like rambling, we're gonna do a little a girl chat mukbang, okay? So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. Hit the subscribe button, or better yet, click the link in the description and subscribe to my online community where I give details on my outfits where i'm going where i'm staying what i'm eating like these videos are just the entertainment this is just the crap but if you want the real stuff the real deal you want to know where to thrift shop where to stay airbnb versus hotel wherever you're going guys i am your personal travel guide hit the link in the description box but anyway let's get into this video so Today, I'm gonna be answering questions, but I'm also gonna be eating because I'm really hungry. So, here is my food. I think this is linguine. Um, yeah, this is linguine. Uh, and then this is the white chocolate cheesecake. That looks so good. And then I just got like a water. I think this is my bread. And so, yeah, guys, let's break bread, family. Let's break this bread, but let's do it over here. And then I'll be answering some questions on my blog. Oh gosh. Okay. So first of all, thank you guys for those of you who have actually joined the community online and you guys have sent in some questions um, for this girl talk today. If any of this helps you guys, go ahead and submit your questions and let's talk and let's chat about it together. I really want this to be like a community, not just me talking at the camera, but I want you guys to really give me feedback and send in questions, like let's get to know each other. All right, so the first question is from Loni in San Diego. Loni says, how do you deal with a boyfriend who has a constant poor me complex? My foot, my hope. Oh, my soul is on my strong is on my horse. Oh, let you, I can't even raise it. Oh, my God. He doesn't Oh, my God. My boyfriend, 35 male, acts like I have to worship him because he works hard. He works hard most times, yes, but I'm not sure why he takes it out on me and always says stuff like, I have to work hard while you have fun. This isn't even true. Suck it up, it's your career. Um, what does that choice have to do with me? I'd honestly rather be working than dealing with our, I'd rather be working than dealing with our teething cranky baby. All right, well, Loney. Okay, I can tell you're fired up and you're frustrated. Um, I mean, a boyfriend, I feel like it's definitely, I can tell where, like why you're frustrated. I have also been in situations where it's like I'm in a relationship or even a friendship where it seems like the other person doesn't really understand, I guess, like my struggle or what I'm sort of putting into the relationship. Maybe because like, I just kind of like complain less or like, I don't know when things happen, like I'm a pretty 
easygoing person it takes a lot to get me like cranky and going like i can go on four hours of sleep and i don't know if anything happens unless it's like super bad i can pretty much just like shake it off i'm not like an easily irritated person versus sometimes i've been in relationships with people who have just been like the smallest thing will just like get them going okay it'll get them upset it'll get them tight and then that will just cause issues and so kind of relating back to your question it's kind of like your boyfriend might be i guess looking at this the fact that you might be sort of natured like that as like oh wow your life is so easy i feel like sometimes people think because of the fact that yeah i don't get upset easily and i'm a pretty happy person your life is so easy um you don't work hard um you don't you don't take anything seriously but like it's just it's just not in my nature to visibly be upset or like, like. Dude. Right now, my emotions are so fired up. I don't even think I can cry if I wanted to. You know what I mean? And some people just like to talk about, you know, how hard they work and just sound like a broken record. So I would just say, talk to your boyfriend, like communicate with him, tell him that, hey. Like, this is how I feel sometimes and sometimes i can you know relate to you and you know maybe he's also kind of he has this sort of poor me complex because maybe he doesn't really feel heard or acknowledged in the relationship i would honestly just talk to him but you need to like speak up for yourself in the sense that like if something bothers you or something that he does bothers you just because you don't have to you're not a reactive person you can still like communicate like hey i'm upset by this or hey i'm feeling really stressed out by this what's she talking about and i feel like if he understands what you're going through he might not feel so alone i don't even know if that was good advice but there you go we have broken bread next question the next question is from sierra in brooklyn this one is interesting. My friend 22 is ignoring me, but she is still in touch with my boyfriend, male 24. So I, female 23, had this friend, Sophia, which I was very close to when I met my boyfriend, Dan. Of course, I talked to her about him. It, at, some, at some point they met and they were good with each other and this was not a problem for me until i leave the city and they're still hanging out together it's an evil world we live in and this didn't bother me at all nothing bad was happening sooner i came back to town and now she doesn't have time to respond to my texts neither to hang out with me but of course she made plans with my boyfriend oh hell no I don't know what to do. I want to talk to my boyfriend and tell him that I don't like Sophia anymore, but I don't want him to ban anything. I know for sure that if I were friends with any of him, any of his friends, he would be comfortable. He wouldn't be comfortable at all. I have nothing to talk with them. So I think Dan also should have nothing to talk with my friends if I'm not a fr around. I would also like to talk to Sophia and tell her the truth that what she's doing is hurting me, but I guess it's very obvious that I won't get a text back. First of all, your friend is weird, okay? I don't even know if it's your real friend, okay? Second of all, trust your gut instinct, okay? If you think that something weird might be going on, trust it, okay? You don't need to see proof to just see the clues glaring in your face. I feel like sometimes we as women, it's like, unless we catch someone in the act we'll just keep going back but it's like a lot of the times it's not gonna happen like that you're not gonna catch someone in the act and it's like <gasps> what? like it's not gonna be like a hollywood movie sometimes you just need to know to read between the lines but it seems like you trust this guy dan so if you feel like he's probably not doing anything then i would say also trust that don't jump to conclusions but I would definitely say just like, yeah, maybe just steer clear of that friend. She seems kind of odd or weird. Maybe um, something's going on in her life, but nah. If she has time to like text your boyfriend and make plans with him, mm -mm. she's just... She belongs to the streets. Just don't deal with her. Um, 
And the next thing about letting your friends hang out with your boyfriend alone. I'm not saying that. There's anything wrong with that. I don't think there is. Huh? Stop the cap. <laughs> but you said that you introduced your friend to your boyfriend. So in that, it's not like they knew each other before. So in that case, honestly, I would say like, that's kind of weird because it's like, yeah, you kind of said it yourself at the end. What do they have to talk about when you're not around? Cause I don't know whether she's a hoe or not, but she done been around the block. He wouldn't even be comfortable with you talking to his friends while he's not around. So why, you know? Don't play yourself, girl. You honestly, you know all the answers. You said all the answers in your own question. So trust your gut. That's my advice. Next question. We'll return after these messages. Je vous parle d'un temps que les moins de 20 ans ne peuvent pas connaître. On m'a qu'en sept ans, là. Accrochez ces lilas jusque sous nos fenêtres. Et si l'un de garni qui nous servait de nid ne payait pas de mine. C'est là qu'on s'est connu, moi qui crie, famille, et toi qui posais nu. La bohème, la bohème, ça voulait dire. On est heureux. La bohème. So the next question is from Sonia in New Jersey. Sonia asks, how do you make friends as an adult woman? I'm a 26 year old female and I feel very lonely as of late. Oh, um, well, we're your friends. Anyway, so I'm, I recently just came out of a long-term relationship and I don't really have any friends to spend time with. Um, I'm finding I'm spending time, um, I'm just spending my weekends going for walks alone or sitting indoors walking, watching TV. Nothing is wrong with that, I'm um, problematic queen, okay? Um, I just wish I had girlfriends to talk with about my life and listen to them and talk about theirs and go on fun days out and support each other, but I just don't know where to find them. I tried this app called Peanut that someone suggested but it seemed to be mostly mothers looking to make friends with other mothers. I've never heard of Peanut, by the way. Comment down below if you have. Um, how do you make friends when you're in your mid 20s? Okay, so I uh, graduated from college a year ago. So I definitely understand kind of the place that you are in your life in terms of the fact that you're not in school anymore. So it's not just like, oh, go to your classes, meet people, make friends like that. At this point, I feel like making friends is definitely, you definitely have to put more effort into your friendships because it's not like you see your friends every day like you used to when you're in school. And like being friends with your coworkers isn't always bad, but I don't know. Me personally, I didn't always like to be super duper close with my coworkers just because of the fact that like they work with you. And so it's like, I don't know. You never really know. Like they have that on you. Yeah. <laughs> in a weird way like you don't want like how you you act outside of work to affect how they see you or how they treat you i don't know so mm. Mm -mm. But I do have some tips on how, like, I make friends, basically, now that I'm out of college. I try to, like, get involved in activities that interest me so that it's easier to kind of meet, rather than meeting people randomly, you're kind of meeting on the basis of a common interest. Me too. So if you have any, like, local, um, maybe travel, um soccer or lacrosse teams 
are like little leagues. Hi, I'm Larry. Not little leagues, but um, what's the word? Like weekend teams that play, go out and play. Or if you have any like clubs, book clubs, or um, theaters in your town, try out for the play. in them to die to sleep no more go get involved in sort of hobby like activities and you can make friends that way um when i go to networking and meet up events you can find these online. They're hosted in a lot of like major cities, Atlanta, San Francisco, um, even smaller towns. It's a cool way to make a trip out of it. But find like another um, sort of meetup or conference or some sort of talk around like whatever niche you're interested in and go there and meet people. People at those events are looking to network, make friends and meet people. And the great thing about this is like, I feel like when you're in school, you're kind of like forced into the friends that you have there. But like the great thing about graduating, it's like while it is more intentional and maybe a bit trickier to make friends, you can definitely make friends that like are actually like friends based on interest and shared passion and shared hobbies. And then the last thing I would say is basically use social media to like connect with friends and stay in touch with maybe people you went to school with. So for example, I have friends at Brown University or like from when I went to Brown. We weren't that close when, we, when I went to Brown, but maybe I followed them on Instagram and I'm in their city. I'll reach out to them and I'll be like, hey, let's get lunch. Even though maybe at Brown, we never really hung out, but we just kind of knew of each other. And I feel like once people graduate, they're definitely more, don't be shy to like hesitate and reach out to people. That's why there's a whole alumni um, alumni network. So tap into the alumni network of your schools, your high school, maybe not your high school, that's a long time ago, but um, yeah. And just like, yeah, reach out to people that you used to go to school with, like reconnect with them. I feel like the biggest thing is like reconnecting on like some sort of like common basis whether it be like education or hobby or passion or whatever this pasta is so good mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i just added the parmesan it was so good Absolutely killed that. <laughs> oh, wait. I have a glass. Okay, and finally, I saved our last question for this beautiful cheesecake here. Look at it. Ah! It's a white chocolate cheesecake. I've actually never had that, so let's see how it is. But first, let me read the question. Our last question is from Tim and Evanston. Guys, we actually do... <laughs> there are a lot of um, males in this community. Welcome. Welcome to the fucking show. I was not expecting you, but we're happy that you're here. All right, so Tim, my girlfriend was caught texting a past partner. I was on my girlfriend's phone, and I'm really not the person to go through her phone, but she's been talking to a lot more people a lot more, and I felt insecure, so I looked. Okay, Tim, stop being insecure. <laughs> I saw that she was texting someone she had a relationship with a couple of months ago. And I, oh. 
<laughs> and just a week ago, she was telling them how much she misses them, cares about them, and still wants to be with them. Her words were, you can hurt me 10 times and I'll still want you. Now, after I confronted her, and it seems, after I confronted her about it, and she claims that the guy is now blocked and she will stop talking to him and ask and is asking to see him but that change has not happened what's she talking about i feel as if she cheated i have somewhat ended things with her and yes she has apologized but i do not feel like it is fair to me to just pretend that nothing happened even though i do very much still love her any opinions on the situation tim you you full of that's what you are you full of have a, also see you guys are really so smart like i don't even think i need to publish this video because you guys kind of answered your own questions okay you feel in your gut that she has cheated okay and tim let me tell you she is weird okay something is definitely going on here i was like my me my me my me my me bitch i'm here and left you for the hell and I think you probably did the best to like distance yourself from the whole situation. But like This is a mess. Something's gone wrong. Tim, if someone if I was with somebody and they texted someone else and said that they used to date and said you can hurt me ten more times and also want you, Tim. I'm sorry, but the relationship is over. It's done. It's This isn't over until I say it's over! It's over. I'm sorry. Mmm. This is really good. Wow. Mm. I'm really sorry this happened right at the beginning of cupping season two but hey it's not too late it's still october but okay let me be serious but no um tim i think that your best bet with this girl is honestly just to cut her off because since you still really love her if you try and give her space to explain you're really just giving her space to manipulate you right because you really love her you're probably going to be more susceptible to her emotional man manipulations because like she knows what you want to hear and she's going to tell you that she might tell you that she might be afraid to lose you but tim if she cheated once or if she's not really over this guy and she's texting him that you know, she might have feelings for you. Maybe there's love there, but Tim, you could really get hurt trying to trust someone when you already know you're pretty much playing second fiddle, okay? So I would just say like, take care of yourself, hang out with the boys, start spending Saturdays with the boys again because this girl is no good. The moral of the story to everyone watching this is like trust your gut instinct trust the facts and the clues that are right in front of you guys don't let people play with you okay it is the beginning of cuffing season but trust me being cuffed is not worth your sanity being cuffed is not worth being with someone who's abusive being cuffed is not worth being with someone who's toxic and doesn't appreciate you guys learn to enjoy yourself your alone time i'm gonna link one of the blogs i wrote on the art of being alone go ahead and give that a read if you're looking for some strength this winter season and how to stay warm on your lonesome okay i'm gonna end girl talk here and finish up with my mm, beautiful cake one-on-one -on -one. but you enjoy this video and you want to see more go ahead and hit the subscribe button 
submit your questions for the next one and yeah comment down below what i should eat during the next video um Love you. Bye. See you later.